You know, the internet is king of showing you that you are not unique in almost any way. Having access to the entire globe will bring you down in terms of being special. Did you know that pretty much every ethnicity thinks they are the only ones that have a plastic bag full of plastic bags at home? So many people think that is unique. Not me though. I'm a dad, but I'm not your typical dad. Oh, come now. That is a lie. What? I'm different. Are those uh, dirty new balances that you have on? I wouldn't call them dirty, but they do need new insoles. What's your favorite hat? This plain gray one with no logos whatsoever. What's your point? Favorite band? I mean, probably the Eagles, but really the entire decade of the 70s is peak music. <sighs> oh, hey, it's time to go, but the kids aren't ready. Oh, gang, come on, let's hit the road. I'm hungry. Hi, <laughs> hungry. I'm basic. <laughs> uh, don't, can, hey, can we roll something to make him happy? Oh, that's really nice. Well, in addition to those things, I'm predictable in another way. I'm a dad, and I enjoy dad dramas. What are dad dramas, you ask? I had the same question after I watched Reacher, and then I saw an article about dad TV you might enjoy if you liked watching Alan Richson beat up money launderers. I perused the article, certain that I wasn't so predictable. Oh. Oh. No. Oh yes, let's have a look at just how basic I am with some of these shows, just how amazing Reacher Season 2 was, and I have some thoughts on why we love these kind of shows so much. Before we get going, I just want to ask you two quick questions. Number one, have you checked your oil? You know you need to stay on top of that. Number two, have you hit the like button like your mom asked you several times? You know, your mother and I, we don't ask a lot of you around here. So I found a list of 15 of these shows, and, you know, maybe I am unique after all, because I actually can't say that I like them all. That's only because you haven't seen them all. That's not the point! So what makes something dad TV? As I listed these shows and I reflected on them, I think there have to be four key qualities, and I think it's kind of funny that these shows are getting banging ratings, despite these qualities being twisted as being toxic in modern America. These shows just appeal to male fantasies and female fantasies. First, protecting the innocent. If you look through these lists, there is a running theme of the guy who isn't gonna stand around and see good people or children get hurt by the bad guys. He's gonna do something about it. This is a man fantasy. And it's quite sad to see that it's been interpreted as toxic by certain segments of the population. You can find supercuts online of guys, especially in 80s and 90s movies, saying, let her go to the bad guy who has the lady hostage and things are about to go down and the day is about to be saved. This is now being viewed as toxic misogyny because it implies women can't do it for themselves or, or something. It's a really strange way to view the world, but whatever. Protecting the defenseless is even more relevant to parents because we have people we really would kill for. So that's why guys tune in to watch The Mandalorian protect Grogu or Jack Reacher rescuing a woman from a carjacking in the first few minutes of Reacher season two or Nathan Ford helping people being preyed upon by the rich and powerful in Leverage. What's funny about a lot of these shows is that the supposed pursuit of toxic male glory is obviously being projected by the kinds of idiots who say things like that because in almost all of these shows, where does the good guy go after the day is saved? He fades into the background, content with the knowledge that he has done good in the world. Horrifically toxic. There was a thing going around recently that guys think about the Roman Empire a lot, which I don't fully believe, or maybe I'm just in the minority on this one, but if you go ask a guy how often he imagines stopping a terrorist attack in the grocery store or coming across a mugging in progress and stopping it or something, yeah, it's constant. I'll be in the Sam's Club for my weekly visit thinking, Huh, those terrorists better not try it in here. <laughs> I might look like the Michelin Man, but I will bring that flannel brawny toughness and I will leave a member's mark on that ass. Chip, I'm gonna come at you like a spider monkey. Come here, quick, serious bit here. Fellas, there are a lot of people in your community that need your help, but probably not in a violent or explosive way, sadly. As fun as it is to think about being a hero, you don't need to wait for a terror attack or a mugging. You can go help people in your area today. Hidden in your town or city are the poor, the addicted, the imprisoned, and the lonely, and they need saving. 
The good news here is that you don't need to be a seven foot tall slab of muscle to help. You just need to sacrifice your time in the service of others. And what better example for protecting the innocent than The Last of Us? Obviously this goes in, it's a show about a dad taking care of a vulnerable child and he's got a soft spot for puns. Yeah, this show is great for everyone, and I do recommend it. There's a great story here with a good blend of drama, suspense, humor, and a whole lot of heart. Also, for the dads, Pedro Pascal is once again facing down the odds to protect someone vulnerable, which is what all dads want to do deep down. You know, we like to think that if push came to shove and our kid was in danger, we would magically grow Liam Neeson's particular set of skills and go death goblin mode on anyone in the way. However, at the same time, if a kid is not in danger and they're just being kind of annoying, we're happy to tell them that. Seriously, Ellie, just shut the hell up sometimes. I need to use my own brain for a second. Does Pedro have kid? He seems like he's doing more than acting in these roles. Wow, he does not. That is some damn fine acting. Seriously. I also mentioned leverage. Hey, do you like heists? Do you like seeing rich and powerful people get a taste of their own medicine when they take advantage of innocent people? Then you're gonna love this show. Former insurance investigator Nathan Ford turns into a Robin Hood style vigilante using his knowledge and his team's skills to turn the tables on those who would abuse their stations. The second must for dad TV is having a posse who will ride with you into the pit of hell at the drop of a hat if it means that justice is getting served. Dads, especially, are starved for this stuff because most of us don't have a team or a lot of friends for that matter. Being a husband and a father is a full-time job, and you usually don't have time for those outside strong bonds. That's why so many of these shows involve old buddies from the military or something where they formed a bond and can call on each other when needed years later. I was very lucky to have a small taste of it in an industrial firefighting and high-angle rescue team, and I can tell you, it's a good feeling to be in a group with a mission. It's also why it's important to keep up with your friends as you enter into parenthood. I mentioned my friend Jeff earlier, who is hard to get a hold of because we both have a lot going on, but we make sure to get pancakes before our kids get up on Saturday mornings about once a month, so at least we've got that. Otherwise, it could be months at a time before we happen to be free on the same night. If you love a good team story, you will love seeing Ted Lasso build a team. He's the dad we all want and want to be. His constant positivity is somehow not the toxic kind, but is infectious. I'm not being hyperbolic when I tell you that in addition to being hilarious, this show will make you want to be a better person. A recommendation from my best friend Jeff was Peacemaker, and I'll toss in the boys here as well. The intro to Peacemaker alone should get you interested. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. Peacemaker and the boys are dad TV guilty pleasures because it's the more gruesome side of dad dramas. It's the exploration of when the bad guys need to be taken down, but the good guys aren't quite so good. And they include some gross humor that you just can't get without the gib settings turned way up. Or is it jib? Because it's short for giblets? Oh, this is like the gif jif thing all over. For the record, however, it is gif with a hard G. What's the difference? One is my name, the other is not. Now, as much as I enjoy these shows, I'm cooling on these a bit as time goes on. I haven't caught up on Boys Season 3 yet because it's just, it's a bit too gross sometimes, you know? And Reacher wants to ride this border a bit too. Much like James Bond, there's a different girl with each book or season, and they wanted to skirt the ratings line as closely as they could. Now, I can't rightly be called old, but as I get older, this stuff just doesn't hold my attention like it used to, and I find more truth in what Cephalus replied when Socrates asked about getting older. Certainly, old age has a sense of calm and freedom. When the passions relax their hold, then we are freed from the grasp, not of one mad master only, but of many. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn! But there will likely still be a small place in my heart for the likes of these guys in Deadpool from time to time. The third ingredient is a protagonist with a strict moral code who doesn't care what has to be done to see the bad guys get what's coming. The second season of Reacher got hilarious with the body count. Reacher and the team racked up like 45 kills, and I am not exaggerating with that number. This one goes with the protecting the defenseless bit. It's a male fantasy to just bypass all the red tape, view the world in black and white, and the bad guys just get what's theirs. 
For example, people who abuse children are, in my opinion, evil and completely beyond help. And, you know, I like to be silly and I joke around in the video and stuff. Just hold on a second. I'm being 100% serious with you that if I were in charge, people who molest kids would just die in horrific and creative and excruciating ways. But that's why we have a justice system, because in practice, you can't run a society that way, which is why dad TV is escapist fantasy where you can. What better example of cutting through the red tape and putting bad guys in the ground than Justified? I want to be as effortlessly cool as Raylan Givens. We all do. Timothy Oliphant plays maybe the coolest guy in the world in this show. He's stoic, but witty. He figures out what's really going on. And when it's time to handle business, well, he's got his business socks on. It's time for business. That's why they call it business socks. What I like about this show is the morality exploration. One thing that is appealing about every dad TV is that justice gets served, both hot and cold. You know, justice is very versatile and can be a side dish, dessert, or main course. Just depends on the show, but it is always served. I think that's one of the core tenets of a good dad drama. But Justified does a great job of letting Givens get things done, sometimes on the edge of the law, because he's a loose cannon who doesn't have time for warrants. But at the same time, a lot of the show is driven by the consequences of his impulsive actions that come back later. The last element joins in with the team thing, and that is being super skilled, especially at killing bad guys. Some of these shows are about an everyman who just magically starts saving the day, but usually it's a guy with some kind of training. He and his team have computer skills, military training, espionage talent. They, they just know stuff about human behavior because of their experience, and it all comes together to help complete the episode. Once again, it's a guy fantasy to be really good at something, and then that something is needed to solve a problem or save a life or whatever. I think it's why we tend to get into research hobbies or skill building. Also, I find it odd that we're trending toward labeling this as autistic. Did you know that boys are four times as likely to be diagnosed with autism than girls and three times more likely for an ADHD diagnosis? Is it possible that we tend to just get really into a subject and we want to know absolutely everything about it and don't want to talk to anyone while we obsess about it? Is it always a behavioral disorder or sometimes is it just how boy brains tend to work? Because Jack Reacher would probably get diagnosed on a spectrum. I'll tell you one guy who uses his super skills to handle business. A dad is betrayed and his friends and family are killed. So he goes SEAL Team Sicko mode and starts killing everyone involved in order to see justice done. Yes, Terminal List is awesome. This is one that I recommend highly because it's not your typical beat-em-up. There are multiple mysteries going here to keep you engaged and guessing. And somehow there is another season, which is a bit odd considering the plot, but I don't care. I'm here for it. Then similarly, there's Jack Ryan. Wait a minute. An analyst nerd is also a super combat agent and it's Jim Halpert. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. And yes, Reacher seasons one and two kick so much ass. This show is so popular, I think, because it tackles all four categories. Right as season two opens, he is saving a woman whose son is being held by a carjacker. He forms an impromptu team in season one, but season two really shines by bringing some of his original team of special investigators back together. Strict moral code? Like I said, Reacher could be spectrum material in the way he adheres to the facts and whose routine and moral compass. He also doesn't let things like the law against pipe bombs get in his way. And yeah, He's got those combat skills and a little MacGyver magic as well. All that and a mystery to solve? This show is the distillation of all dad TV. Jack Reacher is a huge walking group of muscle that spots important details, saves random people from their problems, and somehow gets neck deep in conspiracies in small towns across the country and has to shoot his way out. Imagine if David Carradine had U.S. military training and an enormous frame. He stomps on the bad guys and then ghosts out of town, a wandering soul free from all responsibility, following his own strict moral code, with only the clock in his head and his toothbrush. If you enjoy the show, I think you'll like the books as well. You might also enjoy some books by David Baldacci, who has a series for a character called Will Roby. You know that Jack Ryan show? Author is Tom Clancy, and that character has been on, like, 84 missions. 
Lee Child, David Baldacci, and Tom Clancy should just be given to you in the hospital when you have your first kid because you're gonna love them. So there is a lot of dad TV out there. I didn't even mention CSI, Bosch, Blue Bloods, The Rookie, Yellowstone. There are so many. I had no idea this genre existed all this time and I'm the prime audience for it. Something that should be mentioned is that women are watching this too. However, I'm fairly certain that instead of dad TV, they're calling it daddy TV because there is a clear archetype here. Look at the guys they cast and the type of character they usually are. Chris Pratt, Alan Richson, Pedro Pascal, Timothy Oliphant, John Krasinski, Kevin Costner, Tom Selleck. These guys are in their late 30s and 40s. They're more mature. They're more serious. These characters are man's men who know things. They've got skills. They have a plan and they execute that plan. They're getting things done. Physically, they're not all enormous like Richson, but they aren't scrawny either. You're not going to find Timothy Chalamet or Tom Holland in these shows. And neither are they super striated, but instead just bulky. Fellas, if you think a corner office, a Lamborghini, and 4% body fat make you high value, you might want to think again, because these guys don't have that, and they are still causing spontaneous ovary eruptions across the country. These men are confident and self-assured, and they provide security, both in the physical, I'll kill people who threaten you kind of way, and also in the, I've got things handled, you don't have to worry about it kind of way. These guys know how to repair a bed frame after they've broken it and already have a dinner reservation without you having to ask. Smash, 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 smash. There is one negative that it would be dishonest to avoid, however. On this channel, I've slashed Disney to pieces for their abysmal writing and dialogue in the last few years, and it would only be fair to talk about some of the dialogue and plot choices in Dad TV. Since these are simultaneously macho fantasy and book boyfriend material, the dialogue can get a little silly at times, as can the plot devices. In the recent Reacher, for example, I'm fairly certain that a man cannot kick a parked car hard enough to set the airbags off, and they made sure to end the first several episodes with a quip that made me think The Who was about to start playing. What is it that you want? I want to throw you out of a helicopter. <laughs> and while I acknowledge that, there are two things that I want to point out. Number one, I don't give a single shit because it's cool. Number two, they use it sparingly and for fan service. And this is where dad TV differs from the other kinds of crappy modern writing that we're seeing. Dad TV knows its audience and gives them exactly what they want. Other writers know what the audience wants, gives them something totally different because the writer thinks they know better and that subversion is super clever, and then tells the audience they are wrong for not enjoying it. Shockingly, fan service dad TV continues to get incredible ratings and viewership numbers with Reacher already greenlit and working on season three. Meanwhile, she-Hulk won't be getting a second season. Oh my, that is shocking. I am shocked right now. Tell me your favorite dad TV show and why down below. This year, Guy Ritchie is doing a movie called The Department of Ungentlemanly Warfare, and it looks dad-tastic. It's in my 2024 predictions video, which is right here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.